就以下落嚟咧，我哋而家咧就會進入下一個英文嘅環節，係美國華人實業協會嘅其中嘅贊助單位 C H L 嘅 workshop。咁我哋 workshop 嘅題目同埋時間咧，就係喺呢個三點至到三點半嘅。咁以下落嚟咧，我就將時間咧交俾阿高高，係我哋嘅後任會長，美國華人實業會後任會長。So the coming sessions is going to be English version, and our first will be our second elect Google. Yes, hi everyone. Yeah, well, thank you, Google. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Derry. Thank you, you Google. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, so again, my name is Go Go Wu, and thank you everyone to be here. Um, we're very honored to have uh, our guest speaker, Mai uh, Warshaw. Uh, he's an experienced architect uh, to talk about ADU because now everybody's shelter in place. So you know we we'll probably want to do something to our house, and we just personally, I have just run like. Like some material run earlier today, so my husband is building some cabinet and doing some stuff to improve our house, and especially likely we're going to do a lot of uh, like shelter. Well, hopefully we'll get out of it, and then but then we'll do a lot of home office. So maybe it's a good time to improve the property, add some ADU in, uh, which is accessory drilling unit to your property. So. Um, we have a section, um, so Mike, uh, sorry for a typo on our flyer. So Mike is uh, a experienced architect that specializes in Bay Area and Marin County. And also, um, you, I know that you have office in the East Coast for New York as well, so awesome. And um, we also have our um, sponsor, um, Brian Hu from uh, CHL Construction. So Brian is a very, experienced um, contractor, general contractor in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so we're going to talk about the ADU and also some impacts for construction inspection um, during the shelter in place order. Um, so from three to 3.30, it's gonna be in English. And then from 3.30 to four, it's gonna be in in Cantonese. So um, if anyone has a question, again, you can post it on the chat room and then we'll answer that question. Um, after the first 15 minutes, a uh, guest speaker talk about their information. Um, and also, um, please mute your uh, speaker. If you have any question, um, just type in the chat room. And um, now, uh, Mike, can we have you start? Absolutely. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Um, so great. My name is Mike Warshaw. I'm an architect. Um, as Gogo mentioned, I have an office in San Francisco and in New York. Um, I do mostly uh, single family homes and residential architecture. Uh, I do do some multifamily, but um, the bulk of my practice is single family homes. Uh, so I'm here to talk about ADUs, which Gogo said. Um, so accessory dwelling units. So I wanted to first talk a little bit about what that is exactly. Um, sh the short answer is it's another full additional dwelling unit that can be either attached within the confines of an existing uh, dwelling unit or a house or a multifamily building or it can be on a property that already has a house, but it can be a separate building on the outside. The, the reason it's called an accessory dwelling unit is it's intended to be able to add a dwelling unit to a zoning lot that previous to the dwelling unit law wouldn't be able to have an extra unit. So in the Bay Area or all of California really, um, there's a lot of single family properties that are zoned and they were only allowed to have one house on the property and uh, the state started trying to add units when we got into the housing crisis and one way they've done that is to allow additional units onto these properties so if you have an existing single family house uh, or you're building a new house and you're on a zoning lot that used to only allow for one unit 
you can then add an additional unit. So you could have two. And in some cases now with uh, some of the additional laws that were enacted um, at the first of this year, uh, you can even have three units on what was previously a single family home property. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process and then some of the benefits and maybe some of the um, things to look out for for your clients if somebody's considering doing a dwelling unit. Um, and then uh, we'll take some questions and, and talk about um, um, you know, how, how to move forward from there. So um, there are slightly different uh, versions in each city. So I'm primarily going to talk about it from the standpoint of San Francisco. Uh, each city has a slightly different process, but it's more or less the same. And you know, even within San Francisco, uh, uh, there's different zoning for each property. So you really, so there's really no one answer that fits every zoning lot in all of the cities, but the process is generally the same. So uh, if you are a single family, if you're a single family house, um, and you want to add an additional unit, uh, you can do it. And so the, the first question is, where can I put this unit? So um, up until the first of this year, basically the answer was anywhere where you are legally allowed to have a structure within, within that property. So uh, the most common place to add an accessory dwelling unit is to convert some already unfinished space into an accessory dwelling unit. So that could be a garage or a portion of a garage or a basement if there is one. Um, it could be uh, above a garage space if there's a detached or semi-detached garage. Um, it could be um, uh, an existing legal structure in the backyard uh, if there's a storage shed or a studio that was primarily just used for um, some sort of recreational use, it could be converted into an actual living space. Um, if you are wanting to add space to a property to make your accessory dwelling unit, you can do that. Uh, generally speaking, it has to be a space that's allowed to have a building on it though on the property. So if you have backyard requirements, um, you're not allowed to put it too close to the property lines. Uh, add bulk to the building. So you can do an addition to your building to put on your accessory dwelling unit. Uh, but in all cases, um, well, traditionally, it would still have to be allowable uh, by zoning. And so each, each, again, each zoning property, each city has their own rules, but you would have to follow the um, the setback rules, the backyard rules, side yard rules. Um, and also it should be noted that when it's converted to livable space, you have to also be able to conform to all of the life safety issues. So you need access to light and air, you need access to um, egress. Uh, if there's a fire, people need to be able to escape. Uh, sometimes there needs to be uh, open spaces, um, you know, outside of each dwelling unit that is that is on the property. Uh, so basically, um, the short answer to where can you put your ADU? You can put it within the existing envelope, or if you're planning on doing an addition, you can put it anywhere where you could put uh, legally put I finished all my words. Uh, good line. legally put a, a a property or a building on the property. Now I've alluded to um, some rules that were were changed recently. Uh, the state of California is trying to address the housing crisis, so they um, put out several several laws that were signed into uh, or put into effect the first of this year um, that will allow for additional places and a lot of. Oh, that's okay. You um, uh, so that'll allow for, for additional spaces where you can put it. And some of those laws are, um, the state has now said that none of the cities can prevent you from putting a new structure on a property as long as there's at least four feet between the new structure and the property line. 
and as long as it is under 16 feet tall. So even if, um, say, take San Francisco, where you're required to have at least a 25 foot rear yard, according to the state requirement, we can now put an accessory dwelling unit um, in that backyard space, as long as there is four feet between the, the building and the fence, and as long as it's not um, taller than 16 feet. So this potentially opens up a lot of space for somebody who wants to do another, a new project. Uh, in addition to that, part of the state rule is saying that we can also add what's called junior accessory dwelling units. And these are specifically very small accessory dwelling units that are under probably 500 square feet. And um, again, they have to conform to all of these zoning rules. And in addition, it has to be an owner occupied property, which means that in order to have the junior dwelling unit, the owner has to occupy either the main house or the junior accessory dwelling unit and live on the property. But uh, in doing this, you can now have a single family home, which could potentially have up to three units on it, or a property that's zoned for a single family only could have up to three units on it. And then um, for multifamilies, um, the state has allowed for 25% uh, of the existing units can be, uh, that number of units can be added as accessory dwelling units. So if there are um, currently 16 units on a property and there is some unused space existing, 25% uh, of 16 is four, you could potentially add up to four accessory dwelling units to the property. Um, and then part of the state requirements is that um, the cities are not allowed to charge unjust fees for this construction, for new construction, uh, specifically for accessory dwelling units. You know, any, any of the fees would still apply. Um, they can't say no. Um, so the city can't say no as long as it fits within these requirements. And um, um, there's also some rules for the utilities where um, where they can't charge additional fees or exorbitant fees for hooking up uh, the new units. And there's also, this is still up for debate, it's not really clear right now, but actually you may not be even required to sub-meter or meter them separately. So they don't even necessarily have to appear as separate addresses for the utility company, which is to say, if you have an accessory dwelling unit that's within the confines of your house, or even if it's in the backyard, um, it could be under one, one electric bill, one gas bill. Uh, you don't have to go through the process of adding an extra meter, which can be very costly and um, time consuming, especially when you're dealing with, you know, a utility like PG&E. So um, the other advantage of, of accessory dwelling units. If you have an existing space, Gogo was mentioning that, um, you know, now that we're all stuck in our homes, we might be considering some additional work. Maybe you've been living and you have this unfinished basement space, or maybe um, you're planning to do a seismic upgrade. Um, it's a really good opportunity to do both things at the same time, because you're already going to put a certain amount of money into, um, building out the walls and what you need to do for a seismic upgrade. So might as well design it and put the walls in a place that's gonna make sense for an accessory dwelling unit. Um, so that's, that's the basics of what an accessory dwelling unit is. Anybody can live there. Uh, you are allowed to rent it out. In San Francisco, you can't do short-term rentals with an accessory dwelling unit, but you can rent it out to a full-time tenant. Um, it may or may not be subject to uh, rent control laws, depending on um, if it's single family or how old the existing property is, if it's new construction or old construction. So that's something that you'd want to look into for kind of each specific, um, each specific property. And then the other, the other kind of thing to look out for when you're from a real estate point of view, if somebody is planning to rent it out, especially in San Francisco, but really all over the Bay Area, once there are additional units uh, on the record, it's really hard to remove 
in a, a, a whole other unit. So if this is your home and it's a single family home and you're going to add a second unit to it, um, you should just know that once there is this additional unit, if you ever wanted to convert back to single family, that might be a little complicated. Now, that's not to say that you are forced to rent it out. If a tenant leaves and you decide that you wanna use it by yourself, you could do so, um, but um, you, just, you just would have basically, it wouldn't be connected to your house in a way that would feel like it was a single family home, perhaps. Um, so then really quickly, uh, we could talk about, I'll talk about how you might add a, a, an accessory dwelling unit to your property. And then uh, I'll take some questions and then um, we'll turn it over to Brian. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so sorry to stop you because yeah, we sure. do have a lot of questions. So, okay. and some, there are some feedback about me being echoey, um, but uh, I personally, I don't have any issue, but um, I'm sorry. I think it's only I think it's only when I'm talking. So, um. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me let me start it. Um, sure. It says uh, does adding one to two new unit to a single family home increase the property value? I heard a mixed message from realtors. So, what do you think? Uh, I would say yes for the most part. In my opinion, um, really any any additional space is going to add value to a property. Um, I think, and um, these days where the values are, where property values are, uh, you're probably, it's going to also outweigh the cost of construction. So whatever you're going to spend to add livable space to your property, I think you're going to gain back in value. That's been my experience, um, especially over the last 10 to 20 years. Um, you know, it, it may, the, the specifics of San Francisco and the rent control laws might be a bit of a caveat to that. So if somebody is looking for a single family home and they are looking to purchase a house that already has an accessory dwelling unit within it, that might be a detraction for them, for that specific buyer because they want a single family home, but it's two units and to get it back down to one unit, like I said, could be a little bit complicated. So I think in that, um, I think in that instance for a specific buyer for a specific property, it might be less ideal, but I think generally speaking, you're gonna see increased value for increased living space of any kind, whether it's a, an accessory dwelling unit or whether it's just a larger uh, single family home. Yeah, I agree. And then another question is one of the new ADU builds signed into law puts a five-year moratorium on the owner -occup occupancy requirement that often hinder ADU development. Does it mean I can rent out both of the units? And yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, that's that's one of the things that's a little bit up for debate right now. So all of the all of the laws these these new laws are very new and um, each uh, city has kind of their own requirements for them for how they're put out anyway. So for example, San Francisco did not have a requirement. If you have one ADU did not have an owner occupancy requirement, but um, I believe South San Francisco does. So if you were to add a uh, ADU to a house in South San Francisco, Prior to this year, you would, uh, the owner would have had to live in one of the units uh, in order to have the accessory dwelling unit. So I believe that the new, the new law does say for the next five years, the owner does not need to occupy and they could rent out both units or let family live in both units and they did not have to live in either one of them if that was a requirement. That the requirement does kick in though from the state laws on that junior ADU. So if you're then going to add the third one, then um, the owner would have to occupy one of the units on the property if you had, if you had a third unit on the property. Okay. And some, uh, I think you answered one of the other questions that, that one of the owner has to occupy in one of the unit um, for the junior ADU. And then there's another question that is, uh, what is the impact fee to add those ADU? Um, that's uh, a nearly impossible uh, 
question to answer. It's going to be different in every city. Um, it's basic, basically the fees are, are going to be based on the new state laws. The goal is that the fees should not be overly excessive in addition to what the construction would have cost you anyway, as far as building fees, filing fees, permit fees are going to, are going to cost. Uh, if you're talking about construction costs, um, Brian can maybe spend some time at the beginning of his talk next. He's, he's a contractor, so he has more specifics on, on construction, but generally speaking, um, you know, on a price per square foot, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, from about, you know, 150, to, probably 200 to $400 a square foot for new construction, depending on what, um, what the complexity is and how large it is. Um, so that's a good way to estimate kind of the construction costs. And then um, as far as the filing or fees are concerned, it's, it should be more or less the same as what it would have been um, just to do any kind of finished construction to an existing space. Okay. And another question, there's a lot of questions. So we yeah. try to see if we can fit in as many as possible. Otherwise, uh, uh, after we end this section, can you leave your contact information in the chat room so everybody can reach out to you if they have yeah, individual question uh, regarding ADU or any of the ar architectural related uh, question? Absolutely, um, yeah, I'll, I'd be happy to get any emails and answer any, answer any questions that we haven't uh, covered. Awesome. And then um, Jenna said, um, as can add 25% of the existing units, which means if it's a 16 unit currently, can add a 480U unit. Is that correct? That's right. So that's for existing multi unit properties or multifamily properties that already exist. And um, they are, um, I believe, that those units have to be within existing structures that are on the property. So that would be a conversion of um, a storage space or a conversion of garage space. And then if they wanna do new detached, um, I think they're limited to two new detached units. Uh, so it can be a total of up to 25% of the existing units um, on the property. But wasn't there a, like a, if you were to do the soft story retrofitting and then you have this unlimited amount of unit that you can, as long as you can fit in, that comply with all these egress and like safety codes and all that kind of stuff? Um, you know what, to be honest, I'm not, um, I'm not sure about that. And I think it also depends on um, which city you're talking about. So some cities may have dealt with that differently and giving you different waivers. And of course, these are also, uh, I should say, these are also the um, typical versions. So this is like non-waivers. So this is just allowable as a right. So there's certainly, again, in every, if every jurisdiction, there is an opportunity to request a waiver and to do other, other projects that might grant you possibilities of additional units. Okay, got it. And also, uh, Robert asked, what if their neighbor says no, then what do you, what do you do? Like, so can you there, do the Yeah, so um, the state also, now this is probably going back five years, enacted laws that um, neighbors cannot just say no to anything that is allowable by zoning or state law. So, um, it used to be um, that neighbors could just just say, we don't like this, and they could say no, um, even if it was allowable by zoning. Nowadays, it's much harder for a neighbor to just say no. Uh, so the short answer is a neighbor can't, if it's allowable by law, if it's allowable by code, a neighbor can't just stop it. Doesn't mean that a neighbor, if it's a larger project, a neighbor can't, um, express their opinions and perhaps tie up and perhaps delay things, but uh, they should not be allowed to stop it if it's allowable by law. Uh, in San Francisco, uh, I should note that this, uh, you know, the process is, and this is true of a lot of cities in the Bay Area, if you are adding 
to a house or if you're adding a new building on a property, it is subject to neighborhood notification. So it's going to be a longer permit process anyway. You're going to have to get the plans together, do pre-application meetings, alert the neighborhood to what you are doing, and they will have an opportunity to express their uh, concerns. And sometimes um, it's, in the, it's in the developers or the owner's best interest to work with their neighbors and to try to you know, come up with some solutions to those concerns, but they can't, for the most part nowadays, they cannot just say no and stop any legal development project. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't think I can. I think we are going to ask two more questions and uh, the rest of the question might have to uh, be a follow up question um, by person reach out to you uh, personally. Um, so another question is uh, what happened if the owner built the junior ADU at some point move out and then rent out the main house? Um, can they do that? That's a good question, and um, it's one of those questions that's perhaps not entirely clear at the moment. Um, but I would, I would, um, well, are are they saying like move out and sell the property, or they want to just move out and rent out all three units? I guess. Yeah, rent out all three units. Yeah, I think I think for the most part. The, the technical answer is no, they can't do that. For the, for the amount of time that they have this junior ADU, uh, it would be subject to owner occupancy, whoever the owner is. So the owner would, be have, to, would have to use one of the three units as their personal use um, now. Do I have any information on how the city or the state is going to check up on that? Um, you know. Are there people who have rented out units that are supposedly owner occupied in the past? I'm sure there are, um, but I think technically the rule is that yes, an owner would have to occupy one of the three units for as long as it existed. Okay, um, one last question before we end this English section. It's, uh, can you do a long-term Airbnb, uh, like a 30 day plus in one of the ADU? Um, you can't do, so you can't do, you can't do short term rentals. Well, again, that's a, um, that's actually a jurisdictional question. It changes from place to place. So in San Francisco, the answer is, is no, pretty much. If you have a, if you have an ADU a separate unit, you cannot Airbnb, um, um, any, any separate unit on your property. Um, for certainly not for under 30 days. Um, some, some other places in the Bay Area may um, have different, uh, different um, Airbnb rules. Um, but I would, I would say that um, if you're familiar with what the rules are for two family currently, I would, I would, I would apply the same considerations to an ADU. It's going to act like a separate unit as far as um, those kind of rental laws are concerned. So if you are allowed in um, a city in the Bay Area to rent out uh, uh, the second unit of a two family house um, on an Airbnb, then you will be, I would imagine you'd be permitted to do the same with the ADU. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh Sorry for all the ones that I couldn't, you know, um, answer. There's a lot of question, but uh, maybe we'll do a follow-up uh, section maybe sometime soon later. But uh, thank you so much again uh, for Michael. Oh, sorry. Uh, and Michael, uh, uh, Mike, uh, for being here and answering all the question. That's really helpful and a lot of people love it. And then... Uh, so now we're going to switch to the Cantonese uh, speaking section. And please be sure to um, share your contact information on our chat group. Um, and maybe if you were to answer some of the question in like writing, please do that if you have time, but not like require. Um, so, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it and be safe. And now I'm going to switch to Brian. So, uh, 大家好, um, 
誒、呃，我係 Gogo， 我係呢個華人實業協會嘅後任會長。咁咧頭先咧，我哋就好榮幸啦，就有呢一個啊誒、呃、設計師、建築師阿、啊、Mike 啊，佢喺呢度咧就同大家解釋啦，即係喺三藩市或者喺灣區啦，誒、呃、加呢個 ADU 嘅一啲情況嘅。但係反應太熱烈啦，有好多問題咧，我哋即係。答唔切，咁一陣落嚟咧，咁我哋盡量即係叫阿咪會留佢個聯絡電話，咁跟住咧就會再誒，即、呃、係、就是、你哋或者另行再同佢聯絡。咁依家咧就我哋咧就、呃、介紹下阿 Brian， 阿 Brian 咧就係呢一個 C c h a l Construction 嘅、呃、東主啦，就同埋係一個 General Contractor 啊、呃，咁佢咧就、呃、最主要就係、是。負責呢個三藩市嘅地區嘅，咁佢咧就會解釋一下，都係啊，即係加建 ADU 嘅一啲情況啦。因為頭先阿 Mike 咧，呢、這個建築師就講咗英文嗰部分，我哋接落嚟咧就會講廣東話呢一部分嘅。咁誒、呃、，Brian 咧就會再傾講一講，即係依家咧誒，我哋依家禁足嘅情況之下啦，誒、呃，喺屋企即係譬如你係要誒。嗯即係如果你整緊屋嘅話咧，咁誒啲咩情況咧？啲 city 對嚴即係 inspection， 即係你裝修嘅每個過程咧，你都會有嚴屋嘅過程嘅。咁 city 依家係又點樣對待咧？咁會有啲咩影響咧？咁同埋如果你喺屋企咧，得閒冇嘢做，想整下間屋嘅話咧，誒、呃、想加 ADU 啊、設計啊咁樣啦。咁就啊，咁、呃、我哋先歡迎阿 Brian 咧，就同我哋講一講依家個情況同埋 ADU 方面嘅嘢咯。誒、hey, ，大家好，我係啊 CHL Construction 嘅工人，我叫 Brian。咁、嗯、咧，我哋而家係誒 shutting in place 啦，所以三環市咧就其實佢係唔接受 single family home 嘅 inspection， 係因為。<咳>我哋唔可以，即系唔系佢哋 consider 呢个诶 single family 咧，唔系 essential 嘅，所以咧我哋就唔可以打电话去诶呢个 DBI 咧，去 request 呢个 inspector 出嚟嘅。但系 ADU 咧，我哋就可以嘅，因为我哋系 provide housing 系去呢个 additional housing for 个 community 嘅。咁咧，我哋有好多工地啦，就。誒 single family 咧就唔可以開工嘅，係因為唔係 essential 啦。但係誒、um, ADU 咧，我哋有好多個工地咧都可以開工嘅。所以而家就誒有有咁嘅情況啦。咁啊誒而家咧就好多我哋嘅工人咧都唔係太願意開工嘅，因為咧就大家都唔想誒、呃、染上呢個病啦。咁就誒、呃、就誒、呃、比較緊張嘅，而家就誒。呃有好多工地咧，就大約係延遲咗三個月個時間啦，將會、呃、我,我之後咧，我哋、呃、就唔知道會幾多啦。咁啊，有啲好多我哋嘅 project 咧，都係進行緊畫圖設計嘅情況嘅。咁啊，有好多誒個、呃、city 咧，就唔而家唔批圖，唔可以入圖啊。咁我哋可以，能要等到五月後啊，我哋先可以再批翻圖啦。但係就應該就唔會係好似以前咁可以 over the counter 嘅。咁你會誒、呃、要遞落去個誒、嗯、city planning 嗰度啦，去 review 啦。咁啊，但係我哋唔可以誒、呃、over the counter 我哋做呢樣嘢啦。同埋有好多誒誒、呃呃、材料公司咧，就誒。呃我哋係誒唔可以即係、就是、太多人一次過入嘅，所以要排隊。你你哋都見到 Home Depot 會誒、呃、大約有時排廿分鐘、半個鐘以上嘅先可以入到去嘅，咁都阻礙到我哋嘅建築嘅進度嘅。誒、呃，嗰、那個你有啲咩問題可以要問嘅？咁咧，你誒、呃、即係好似你又講咗呢個誒、呃，即係好似染屋方面嘅嘢啦，咁樣你可唔可以即係再 take back 翻頭先阿阿 Mike 講嘅一啲誒、呃、關於 ADU 嘅一啲條例？咁跟住咧就
誒講中文，因為我哋有呢一個 section 咧，有部分人士係即係想聽下中文嘅。啊，好嘅，好嘅。咁啊 ，ADU 啦，但係就我哋二零一八年啦，就開始即係誒好多人開始做啊，因為誒好、呃、多城市啦都會 adapt 咗呢個 ADU 呢、這個呢、這個例啦，就誒、呃、譬如我哋誒近住三環市啦，就誒、呃、有呢個 Daily City 啊。誒、uh, 之前咧就誒、um, 每一個誒、uh, unit 咧，每一個 ADU 咧就要相對嘅停車位嘅，每一個 unit 咧又要兩個停車位嘅。但係二零一八年咧，我開始咧就每一個誒、uh, 單位加上 ADU 咧需要一個停車位啊，所以誒、uh, 有啲車房喺 Day City 嘅咧就唔夠深嘅，所以咧就誒淨係得兩個停車位啦。咁我哋而家就可以做到，誒、嗯、誒、嗯、加上 ADU 就可以兩個停車位就可以做 A ADU 啦。咁咧就誒、嗯那個 process 係好快嘅。咁你如果你係有呢個嘅 basement 嘅話，或者或者之前係有啲係唔誒唔合法嘅 basement 嘅話，你可以誒而家 legalise 佢。咁咧就誒。嗯你要需需要揾個誒、呃、建築師咧去畫呢個圖啦，咁我哋誒個 construction company 咧就會去進行呢個估價嘅，估價啦包括咧就誒誒、呃、我哋誒水電啊、誒、呃、冷氣啊，水電咧就可以共用誒一間屋嘅誒水電嘅，但係誒、呃、冷暖氣咧就要誒、呃、一個 separate 嘅冷暖氣啦，就。放呢間屋嘅，同埋咧呢個嘅誒防火條例咧就係、是、誒、呃、你要誒誒、呃、上下嗰個夾層咧要誒一個鐘防火嘅誒，同埋誒好多人都加上誒佢係如果係整呢間屋做 ADU 嘅話咧，佢會加呢個 structural 誒 improvement 啊，即係防地震、防地震去呢個間屋嘅。咁不時間咧就係、是、如果係。唔係新誒，唔、呃、係加建啦。通常我哋誒、呃、做工係大約係六個月啫，四至六個月左右啊，咁就可以完成到呢個 ADU。如果真係加建或者係誒、呃、新建一一部分啊，誒、呃、九個月至十一個月左右咧，都會完成到呢、這個誒、呃、加建嗰部分。咁啊，三藩市需唔需要有呢一个车房嘅要求嘅咧？三藩市冇车房呢个要求，咁啊或者要有单车位啦。Okay. 我而家、呃、我哋而家都今年开始系做紧第一批三藩市嘅 ADU 嘅、嗯，有好多诶呢、嗯這个 building department 入边做嘅嘅员工啦，都有。佢哋都會有申請去做呢個 ADU 嘅，咁係有啲係做緊佢誒頭一批 ADU。咁啊，但係如果你係有兩個地址咧，誒 PG&E 咧就一定要你誒，如果你個煤氣咧誒就一定要兩個煤氣標嘅。但係有有兩個煤氣標咧，誒通常佢設計方面咧要差唔多九個月至十三個月。係放 PG&E 而家呢個時間嘅，所以就延長咗呢個 ADU 嘅嘅誒誒嗰個 schedule 啦。OK， 咁咧，咁我開始預防咧，即係誒歷史再重演啦，因為好多人問問題啦，咁我哋誒先即係開始解答啲問題先。OK， 咁啊 Zeng 咧就話我 basement 咧就唔夠高，咁咧佢就話大概咧可能。俾個要求嗰度咧就抵咗半尺咁上下，咁如果佢應該佢覺得應該係要即係挖落去嘅，咁你知唔知大概即係俾個 cost 大概如果係要整咁樣嘅 basement 加建一個大概六百尺嘅嘅單位 ADU 嘅話咧，個費用大概係幾多咧？三藩市嘅話咧就誒、呃、比較。誒
即係困難啲啦。如果你係個 basement 係唔夠高嘅話，因為如果我畫落去嘅話，我會誒、呃、你個你個誒地基咧，我會誒露、呃、空，即係誒、呃、偷空個地基咧。咁誒、呃、就我要去誒 support 你而家間屋啦，就去做一個 underpin 嘅。誒 underpin 咧就比較貴啦，因為咧就如果你會或者會影響到你你隔離左右。嘅誒鄰居嘅屋嘅，所以咧我哋要好小心做呢樣嘢嚇，咁、啊、就誒誒俾唔到個價錢你啦，因為冇誒、啊、我哋係看圖打價嘅，咁我哋要真係去睇下你嗰個實質嘅情況啦。咁如果你話誒、啊、半尺左右咧，誒、啊、半尺咁，或者我哋都如果你嘅地基係深嘅話，應該都。分到到你嘅地基，或者我哋喺誒個 basement 空間嗰度加一一啲嘅地基去去去誒、啊、承受誒、啊、你樓上嗰個重力咯，咁就都冇呢個問題嘅。咁、yeah. 就而家加一個 ABU 咧，就誒、啊、都誒、啊，因為你要誒。啊好多嘅 requirement 啦，水電啊，或者睇下你要整幾多廁所啊、廚房啊，大唔大啊，咁都係一個好大嘅 cost 嚟嘅。但係通常睇都係廁所啊，或者地基啊，係有好多誒、呃。如果你係唔加防地震誒，你唔使做地基嘅話咧，就誒呢、呃這個 cost 會誒細啲。OK， 咁啊，或者我誒、呃、一陣咧就將你。你打你嗰個聯絡個電話，咁等啊呢位朋友咧就可以誒自行咁聯絡你咧，就問一啲問題嘅。咁咧，另外阿 Wiki 咧就問，如果咧佢想喺個後院嗰度咧就加間屋仔嘅 ADU， 咁有冇話高度嘅限制咧？同埋最多可以加件幾多尺咧？咁樣。啊，頭先阿麥都，如果三人市嘅話咧，就誒係、呃、少過五百尺嘅。咁啊，如果你係我哋而家可以做一誒一啲誒 fabric 嘅 unit 嘅，咁我哋做好曬水電啦。咁我哋就喺第二個城市嗰度啦，起好間屋，跟住調過去嘅。咁啊，會慳好多時間啦。咁誒，我哋都有做過幾個誒案例嘅，但係都唔係三人市嘅，因為三人市就比較誒。麻煩啲，即係有佢個誒誒個空間唔係太大，所以或者啲吊機唔會嚇誒吊唔到過去後邊加一個入邊。哦，原來有啲咁嘅情況嘅，咁但係你大概係高度嗰、那個你誒、呃、大概幾多高啊？同埋幾多尺左右？頭先阿麥都講過話可以誒十六尺嚇。咁我哋就誒高度限制，我哋要翻翻去睇嗰個 planning。設置啊 ，OK。咁有好多城市咧，譬如誒呢個南沙、南沙環市咧，佢其實係有個 ADU 個 program。咁佢其實誒後邊嗰度就可以做一個誒 prefab 嘅屋啦，或者我哋可以誒而家都可以整啲貨櫃屋噶，咁我哋都可以調過去啊。整好個貨櫃屋㗎，咁但係個價錢都都唔係太過，即係都幾貴下嘅。OK， 咁另外有朋友咧就問咧，誒、呃，即係有冇 requirement for 嗰個水標？佢話依家有個用途咧，就係、是、五個單位嘅，就想加兩個 ADU 嘅，咁有冇話要求個水標咧係點樣咧？誒、呃，佢而家有五個單位啊，但係有啲城市咧，如果你係加,加多誒、呃、多過五十個 percent 嘅話，你又要整呢個嘅消防系統啦、呃。消防系統咁你就原來個水管就唔會夠大嘅，咁你就要去申請、呃呃、另外一個米誒個標咧，就個個消防系統嘅，同埋或者要 upgrade 你而家誒嗰條水管咧，就去。一啲大啲嘅個水標嘅 ，OK， 誒
，即係所以係要求水標係要唔要求咧，定係唔要求咧？分開個水標。誒、呃，都係 case by case 啦。有啲就誒、嗯，有啲就，譬如你 single family 誒、呃，而家依家係五個單位嚟嘅。我依家唔誒，我我諗呢個情況要需要需要加呢、這個啊消防系統。OK。即係誒、呃，三環市咧，因為三環市咧就誒冇呢樣嘢，你要新建先先加嘅。咁你要睇下你個城市嗰、那個嗰、那個 requirement 啦。OK。咁你但係你三環市，如果你係加一個保庫誒、呃，加兩個兩個誒、呃、廁所或者誒、呃、上邊又加兩個廁所，咁你而家誒嗰條水管咧就誒誒啲 water inch 都唔夠唔夠大㗎，所以都要。進行一個 upgrade 嘅。O K， 咁跟住咧就阿 Zen 咧就會問你誒、呃，你依家咁啊睇嚟個經濟咧就會放慢，咁你會唔會預期咧呢、這個建築個費用咧響即係即係會將會降低咧咁樣？個建築成本咧，我我都唔會，我覺得唔會誒誒。呃呃減價嘅，因為我哋誒揾個工人咧係少咗嘅。我而家我哋個誒工人喺出邊做工嘅係好多係唔願意出去做工，再加上我哋誒好多建築咧就而家喺度進行緊嘅。咁我哋誒好多誒、呃、都唔夠人手去做誒呢、呃這個工程，所以我覺得都會誒、呃、價錢。就維翻而家即係唔不變咯，但係就或者六至九個月之後咧，或者會加價嘅。OK， 另跟住咧 ，Alice 咧就問你誒，響、呃、三藩市，你知唔知道咧啲防火嘅系統，即、就、係、是、fire alarm 個 system？ 啊 ，for 嗰個 apartment 嘅，咁咧佢就話呢一個要求咧就係、是、新嘅，一定要係即係每一個 alarm 咧都一定要 wire in， 即係駁入個線嗰度 ，for each bedroom 係咪真㗎？咁樣你清唔清楚呢方面嘅問題咧？誒、呃，睇下你係新建還是現有㗎啦，呢、這個 requirement 啊，我都唔太過清楚。都要翻翻去睇下佢而家嗰個係係係點樣嘅 requirement。但係你係嗰個 smoke 嘅誒 smoke 嘅 alarm 啊，誒通通常都要。如果你係誒、呃、做一個誒、呃、remodel 放你嘅屋企咧，你都要 hardwire 每一個廁誒、呃、每一個誒、呃、bedroom 嘅 smoke alarm 嘅。O.K. 阿 Janice 咧就問誒，即、呃、係、就是、typically 咧，即係典型咧，就大概起一個 A.D.U. 咧，就個價位大概係幾多，同埋大概係幾耐嘅咁樣。誒、呃，我二一三零四咧就唔係太多 A.D.U. 而家而家都係頭嗰一批 A.D.U. 誒、呃、出現咗，但係有好多都未完工嘅，所以。誒、uh, 三環市大約都係誒、uh, 都唔會加好多多錢嘅啫，通通常係誒、uh, 加多一個廚房咯，即係譬如你 remodel 一個 basement 一樣，但係加多一個廚房咯，嗰、那個價值上去咯。咁但係就誒、uh, 其他嗰啲城市咧，就如果係新建或者你加一個新建嘅 unit 喺你嘅後。你個誒後後壓嗰度 ，back 壓嗰度嘅話，個誒 cost 大約係三百蚊一個 square feet 嘅，就要、okay. 視乎你誒、呃、有幾多廁所同埋誒點樣起嘅。但係就如果我哋誒好多誒、呃，如果係舊位嘅話，我哋我哋通常做一個 prefab 嘅 system 咧，就呢個價錢會低好多。咁如果 prefabricated 嘅話咧，係要每一尺大概幾多錢咧？誒、uh, prefabricated 咧，我哋誒、uh, 做 utility 啊，或者做誒、uh, foundation 啊，誒、uh, 
就係嗰個價值啦。咁啊 ，prefabrication 咧就會你哋去個廠嗰度睇下你要起多誒誒靚唔靚啦。大約係去廠起嗰啲咧，大約係一百蚊一個 square 一個 square feet 嘅，但係就要加上去你要去誒去 run 你嘅 electrical 啊、plumbing 啊同埋地基啊。呢樣嘢嘅 ，OK， 誒同埋咁大概要幾耐嘅時間咧？如果誒、呃、都係 case by case 嘅，誒同頭先同你講過啦，三環市如果你係個 basement 嗰間 ADU 嘅話啦，係大約係要六個月時間嘅，四至六個月時間嘅。但係如果你係係喺誒做一個誒、呃、新建嘅話啦，就要九個月至。十一個月啦，或者多啲嘅時間，做一個新建嘅 A D U。咁誒，同、呃、埋你要誒、呃、要批睇下個誒、呃、去批批圖嘅時間啦。誒、呃，我哋通常啲客咧就如果係 basement 同埋 A D U 嘅話，大約係三個月。你之前係三個月月去去批呢個圖嘅，但係而家咧就應該會長啲個時間。嗯。咁有人問咧，就如果我自己去攞呢個 home owner permit， 然然然後然後自己揾人起，得唔得？係唔係建築面積係原來個呢個房屋面積嘅一半？頭先阿咪應該係講話唔會超過面積嘅百分之二十五個 percent 嚇。咁但係佢呢個人就話佢可唔可以呢個 ADU 咧就？自己 as a owner 去攞 permit 呀，然後咧就揾人去整咧，都可以嘅。但係誒，首先你要誒、呃、要 make sure 你請人嗰個人咧，就係、是、因為我哋有牌嘅啦，我哋要買幫誒工人買呢個嘅 government car， 同埋呢個有呢個 liability insurance 嘅。但係如果你誒誒。呃呃之前有好多人係冇，即、就、係、是、自己去請人，跟住誒間屋著咗火咧，咁你要自己負曬呢個全責嘅。所以我就唔建議誒、呃、去，除非你係自己係識做嘅，或者你有呢個嘅 knowledge 去管呢批工人，同埋你幫佢買曬誒個工人嘅保險啦，咁你或者都可以。考慮下，但係我就唔建議誒、呃、你做一啲唔唔係你範疇嘅所做嘅嘢，因為涉及好多好多法律上嘅問題。譬如你個工人係受咗傷啦，誒、呃、咁你會誒、呃、有呢個責任嘅。O K， 咁咧就。另外就有人問咧，就佢話你覺唔覺得喺呢個 Daily City 咧起呢個 ADU 咧係 make sense 嘅咁樣？因為咧誒呢度誒 Are there still rental？ 仲有冇即係誒誒出租嘅一啲限制啦？係咪一定要住喺一個咧？跟住要租出一個咁？咁有冇呢一啲嘅 requirement 咧？定係依家依家啲呢個條例已經改變咗啦？咁樣誒、呃，我我自己個屋咧，我都係住喺 Daily City 嘅，即、就、係、是、我我自己有間屋係 Daily City 嘅。咁我都係一八年嗰陣時就有係第一批 ADU 我哋做嘅，咁就係、是、誒、呃、會 make sense 啲嘅。咁因為冇咩 restriction， 咁你加上你可以誒。呃租俾人哋嘅，但係咧你就要住一個 unit 嘅，咁另外一個可以租出去俾人哋。仲有冇其他朋友有問題咧？誒、呃，呢、這、一個框咧就問有冇 San Bruno 可唔可以加 ADU 啊？咁樣。其實而家每一個城市都可以加 ADU 嘅。去到 Hillsborough 都可以加 ADU 嘅，我哋依家都有幾個誒工程喺 Hillsborough 誒去做呢個 ADU 嘅。咁樣咧，如果佢係喺 San Bruno 呢一度咧，你又會唔會建議佢係喺 
第二個地方先起落間屋，然後再調間屋去佢個 back yard 呢一個做法啊？如果佢係有呢、這個誒、呃、空間嘅話啦，我都建議去做做好，即、就、係、是、做好咗啲喺工廠做好，跟住誒運過去佢而家個屋企嗰度，因為慳慳好多時間嘅，因為而家咧個個誒。呃喺出面，我哋自己起嘅建築成本係會貴過喺廠起嘅。哦，係啊，我就係想問呢個問題，即係話咧，如果喺外邊起好咗間屋，先至再調入去自己嘅後院擺喺度咧，就可能會係更加便宜一點添。咁 inspection 方面咧，難道個 inspector 係去個廠嗰度先 inspect 好啲水電咁樣間屋完成曬，調落去個後花園都得？有啲誒、嗯、city 咧，佢係會派 inspector 或者佢你喺嗰個廠嗰度請另外一個 third party inspector 誒寫呢個 report 俾佢，咁就睇下 case by case 啦。咁佢話誒阿 Janice 就問你，即係最大工程嘅 ADU 加建咧誒，即、呃、係、就是、你可以做到嘅咁樣咯。即、就、係、是、你最多可以加幾多個 ADU 啊？咁樣，即、就、係、是、你自己個 team 團隊。哦、oh, 哦、oh. ，因為我自己都係誒做地產誒個 development 嘅，咁我自己都有好多誒 condo 啊，自己都會起嘅，所以誒我同我團隊都誒都可以做到好多大型嘅建築嘅。但係我哋就唔會，即係譬如水電啊，都係 professional 去做嘅，就唔會我哋誒自己嘅做嘅卡著佢做。咁如果你係請我哋 general 卡著同咧，咁我哋有一支好好嘅團隊咧，係做水電啊，同埋誒，譬如 fire sprinkler 啊、地基啊，都一個專業嘅團隊去做嘅。O K。咁另外咧就想問你誒、呃，如果即係譬如你唔即係 add 個 prefabricated 個 house 啦，你頭先就講下大概一百蚊一尺啦。咁你個團隊個 cost 咧要接啲水啊、燈明啊嗰啲咧、地基啊嗰啲咧，咁你個 cost 係每一尺係幾多錢咧？誒、呃，其實唔可以用尺價去估價估價呢呢樣嘢嘅，因為誒、呃，譬如我誒。呃我要行個水管，我要去誒、嗯、掘出去條街咧，嗰、那個價值就會貴好多嘅。譬如我誒、呃，如果我啲電咧可以 overhead 嘅話咧，就會平啲，或者 underground 就會貴好多嘅。所以都係 case by case 呢樣嘢。O K， 咁另外仲有一個人士咧就問話，聽講依家可以有兩個 A D U。響間屋嘅前後一個一個係咪真㗎？咁樣？我諗你個前院咧，就如果你喺誒、呃、一個大啲嘅空間，譬如 Hillsboro， 我哋都做過幾個喺前院嘅。咁後院咧，佢嘅空間都有大，好大嘅。咁佢又可以起多一間 guest house 嘅。所以要要睇翻你嗰個城市嗰個規劃，俾你起多幾多。O K， 咁誒，另外咧就話，咁如果租咗俾人嘅話，咁可唔可以起個俾自己住咧？咁樣，我、哦、呢、這個我答唔到你，因為我我就係、是、誒、呃、起屋嘅啫，我呢、這個我答唔到你。負唔負責即係租務方面嗰啲條例？ O K， 咁有一個人咧就問誒、呃，如果加咗 A D U 之後咧，個地税係會唔會升咧？地税會升嘅，因為係你加咗你間屋個價值噶嘛。誒、呃，聽唔係好清楚，但係誒、呃，你個意思係咪話即係如果加咗 A D U， 你你個價值會升高，咁當然個地税係會升係嘛？係啊，係啊，係。O K， 咁好啦，咁我多謝阿、啊、Brian 同埋啊多謝阿、啊、Mike 
，咁你哋阿 Brian 麻煩你就留低你個聯絡電話同埋你個工嗰啲資料啦。咁啊、呃，如果各位有任何問題嘅話咧，就請你啊，即係同阿 Brian 聯絡。咁啊、呃，之前咧，如果答唔到啊。呃咪嗰啲資料，阿阿咪冇時間去答嗰啲問題咧，咁阿咪亦都留咗佢嗰個 email contact information 嘅，咁我一陣再覆一次喺個 chat group chat 嗰度，咁大家如果有問題嘅可以誒同佢哋私自咁聯絡啦。咁咧依家嚟講咧就係、是、到我哋下一個環節。